Let's go deep into the mirror effect and combined with shadow work, move from pain to gain. Welcome to Love Life, featuring your host, Jane Donovan. The sun shines bright as it moves across my face. I feel the light. I've spoken on countless episodes about both the mirror effect and the shadow side, and yet I've not spoken in length about how to easily use these two tools side by side to help move through emotion with greater understanding. These tools together are brilliant to help understand conflict or triggers, or maybe the negative voice in the head, the ego, or even the inner child. They really are my go-to tools just about every time I experience negative emotions. These two tools together are definitely in my top 10 tools I credit with helping me to grow in my self-acceptance, self-confidence, self-worth, and ultimately self-love. That's a lot of self there. It's hugely changed my life by growing in my self-management, compassion, empathy, self-empowerment, and ultimately to give me a more peaceful and empowered life. So originally shadow work and mirror work for me, it was first off understanding that we can be anything and really anybody in the sense that every quality that exists, we are, and each quality that does exist, we're in the positive and in the negative or in the light or in the dark. Another reason why I feel mirror and shadow work are important is that if I don't dig around in the basement and bring to the surface those parts of me I don't like, then I leave myself open for others to do it for me. And just quietly, I would rather do the work on myself than have triggers, conflict or self-sabotaging behavior going on. These really are two massive spiritual concepts to understand and embrace that I promise you are truly life-changing. Everything that happens to me is about me. So owning this and knowing that I can be all things is the first step to mastering these two tools. So let's get first into the mirror effect. What is the mirror effect? This is a concept that says that everyone is mirroring you. What it is you see in another is what is within you. And that you can only see in another that that is within you. Pause on that for a moment. It's a really important concept to get. If you see something ugly in another, then that too is within you. Now don't go down the shame path. There's no shame, embarrassment or anger at this. Just accept it for what it is. Our stuff, our unowned stuff, our ignored or hidden stuff. Now the flip side of this tool is that you can use it to gain insight into other people. An example is that when someone shares something derogative about another person, it shows clearly what is their shadow side. What we accuse others of is actually what is going on inside of us. Usually a part that is disowned, buried, hidden, be it consciously or subconsciously. And so this is where we go to find the unloved parts of us, the disowned parts. We talk of self-love all the time, and it's so easy to love the good parts of us. The, oh, I'm kind, thoughtful, considerate, compassionate, generous, loyal, honest, trustworthy, etc. These are great qualities to really love about ourselves and to use these constantly to remind ourselves of our worth. However, for people who have been on a spiritual or self-development journey for a while, these parts are easier to love. The tough parts are what we call the shadow side, the ugly bits of us. So why do we do this? As we own a new part of us, that part of ourself that's been denied, we're going to feel more self-empowered. And as we become aware of that quality or trait as being a part of us, we can consciously embrace it as a useful tool when situations are right for it. We can look at it with every trait being a positive or a negative. When worked in the positive, again, it's easy to love. However, when worked in the negative or shadow side, then this is a sign of a part of us needing healing. 
I'm going to go into my own story now of the journey I took in using these tools in my life so you can get some hopefully good examples of how you can use this in your life. The first way I kind of came across this was looking at people that really pressed my buttons. I started to notice a pattern. People who were very arrogant and judgmental really pressed my buttons. I would so want to give them a piece of my mind, call them on their stuff. And in the process, guess what? I started to become arrogant and judgmental in the process. I mirrored straight back to them the very behavior that I so disliked. So by understanding how this shadow work works, it's to acknowledge that judgment and arrogance well, I can actually only see that in another person because it's within me. So how do I now accept, acknowledge and love that part of me? Back then, I would say, no, I'm not judgmental. I would have totally said that really strongly. I was not judgmental at all. And yet, when I started owning it, I was so judgmental and arrogant. It was actually in abundance in my life and it shocked me incredibly to realize that, uh-oh, I was one of those people. Then I moved into denying that and I moved into the denial by justifying why I was judgmental. I wasn't judgmental. Here's how I can justify that and then I'd tell a great story of how I came to that opinion and I justified in an arrogant way. So instead of owning that judgment was a trait of mine, I moved into the victim story. One of, it's not my fault I'm judgmental, have a listen to this story. And then as this pattern continued, I had to acknowledge that I was the common denominator. And as we know, the universe always delivers the lessons to us. This one was coming at me thick and fast. It seemed during this period of time that I was really wanting to learn about myself more. I was seeing judgmental and arrogant people everywhere. So time to put the spotlight on me and I would have to put money on it that this mirror stuff wasn't working because I seriously wasn't this person. And yet there it was. It wasn't even buried deep down. It just wasn't. It was my primary operating personality. I was even in denial of that. It was right there in great big letters, flashing neon sign. And I feel that many people back then would have said that I was judgmental and arrogant if they were asked to describe me. I was really deeply in denial of this, that this was within me. And it was a huge shock to realize. So acknowledging that this is me is a huge step and a very important one to take. I've watched for years clients be in denial of this and struggle with owning something they perceive as negative. And yet once it's owned, then we can do something about it. So owning this really was a bit more than a sting and a bit more of a huge ouch, but it was incredibly important to acknowledge. And as I did, I saw so many past scenarios play out in my life as a result of these qualities being so dominant. I was hugely reactionary and being triggered left, right and centre. And yes, I was self-sabotaging. So the next step is how do I learn to love this about me? This is what self-love is, loving the ugly parts of you. As I said before, it's so easy to love the good parts. It's harder to love the stuff you don't like about yourself. So then I put the spotlight on the quality of judgment to start with. Now, if you're playing along at home, then you bring out that one quality, whatever the quality is for you. And now you're going to be looking at the qualities and recognizing that this is within you. And as you do so, do a bit of exploring of how this has actually played out in your life. Have you used these qualities? The answer is yes. The question is, how have you? Particularly for now, look at how this has self-sabotaged you. This is a behavior that has not served you well. And so own it so that you can change it. List all of the negative ways, well, for me, that judgment played out in my life. So you list all of the ways that this trait or quality is playing out in your life in the negative. But then 
you do the flip side. You list all the positive ways for me that judgment is useful. This really needs to be a pen and paper activity. I actually think it's healthy and much more powerful if you do get the pen and paper out and do it this way. The positive for some traits is going to be easy for you to find, while for others it can be a stretch, so you might find you have to dig deep and really try to find the balance. It's in finding the balance of any given quality that the gift of acceptance comes. So with judgment, so it's easy for me to write the negative list of how bad judgment can be for me and how it was playing out and self-sabotaging in my life. However, there's also the positive side because without really good judgment, I wouldn't be the mother that I want to be. I couldn't be doing the work that I'm doing as a matchmaker. I wouldn't be good with time management. I would struggle with creating healthy relationships. I've got to have good judgment in my life. This is a crucial quality to living the life I enjoy. So now you start writing the list of all the positive reasons for your trait. And here is where the magic is. It's in this moment now that it becomes easy to accept whatever the quality is you're examining. Now you don't feel so shameful about owning this quality within you. Now using me again as an example, if someone says, oh, Jane, you're so judgmental, I'd go, hmm, yeah, I am. Now the person saying this to me is likely using it as a negative thing to say. However, the sting of this has gone. I am not in denial. I am not being triggered. I don't move into justifying. I don't move into mirroring back whatever their negative energy is. I can easily move into acceptance of what they have said instead of in the past moving into aggression or defensiveness or feeling emotional pain for their words. Now there is no emotional pain. I'm in neutral energy. It's a simple, yes, I can be judgmental. And a tip, as you work on this, you can add to the conversation with them if you want. I'm working on changing this about me. But then we can bring in speaking our truth while staying in rapport and perhaps ask, I didn't mean to come across as judgmental and I wouldn't want you to feel that way about me. Can you share how this feeling has come up in you so that I can talk it through and repair the damage? Now again, I'm not being defensive or aggressive. I'm in neutral energy, but I'm caring about this person. I want to be in rapport. I want to fix this. Now, however, the flip side, if it's someone who you don't wish to be in rapport with, then you can just move on. You don't have any reaction. You hear what they say, shrug your shoulders and move on. The big gold star reward from this exercise is that there is no charge. And like with everything we're learning, the universe, I want to remind you, is going to give you the tests to deal with this. The universe will definitely send you people with the trait that you're working on in abundance to see how you're going. And so for me, as I did this work, I still continue to have a flood of people coming through with judgment and arrogance. And yet in time, I was able to move from being in a reactionary place to one of observation. And this is how we gain compassion and empathy for the true divine connection we desire to have with another person. Now, if you want to really turbo boost your self-love, don't wait to use the mirror effect. Just go straight to the shadow work. List all the qualities you don't like about yourself. Now, if you can't find any, then maybe your mother Teresa reincarnated, or Maybe you do need to go back and use the mirror effect to help get some insight into the unloved parts of you. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Well, you are, of course. <laughs> okay, now we've done some work on the shadow side using the mirror effect to identify suppressed parts of ourselves. Let's now have some fun with this shadow technique by working it in the positive. This one's a gorgeous exercise to have you find more of the beautiful qualities you have, perhaps without realizing, and it gives you some insight into what you may like to be experiencing 
or having more of in your life. I love this exercise. It's so beautiful and I've had some fun doing this a lot on radio with some radio hosts. And I find that this really is a powerful exercise for implementing fast into your life. So start by selecting one person that you absolutely adore. It can be someone you know in real life or perhaps a celebrity. It doesn't really matter who it is. Now, I've got a friend who's completely obsessed with Oprah. Actually, she manifested to meet Oprah not just once, but twice. Yes, she loves Oprah and I did this exercise with her. Now, I don't want you to overthink this. I want you to answer this question immediately without overthinking. Tell me the reasons why you absolutely love this person. Give me three reasons why. Ideally, they're going to be qualities, but they don't have to be. Now, using the mirror effect, you can now acknowledge that these three qualities are also within you. Remembering, you can only see in another that that is within yourself. The bonus insight here and why you chose this person is that these same three qualities, while they're within you, they are in abundance more in the person you admire. So now it's time to look at how could you increase using these qualities in your everyday life? Or possibly these are three qualities that you are denying within yourself. Every time I've done this exercise with someone, the answers they give, I too can see within them. However, often, they've not recognized this within themselves. So this is a beautiful exercise for the positive self-love. So now we have some more gorgeous parts of ourselves to own, accept, and love about ourselves. Okay, so back to my Oprah loving friend. She said the three qualities that she saw in Oprah were love, strength, and power. And then she went on and said, oh, but everyone would say that about Oprah. She actually thought that everybody would see the exact same three things. Now, I knew this wasn't the case, but I thought, all right, we'll prove the theory to her. So we asked around the studio to check if the theory was right. And of course, everybody saw something completely different in Oprah. Some of the other comments were humanitarian, outspoken, independent, philanthropist, creative, dynamic, controversial, kind, funny, bold, and so on. Now, this is the beauty of this exercise. It's that everybody will see something completely different in Oprah because this is the mirror effect. Now, this friend, in my opinion, truly has all three of those qualities of love, strength, and power, and she does exercise them well. However, what she's wanting is more of them in her life. So her soul is saying, you're not operating as much in these three qualities as you are screaming out to do. And the reason for that is that most of us are actually not so much scared of our negative side or our shadow side. We're actually scared of our magnificence. We're scared of how truly powerful, dynamic, impressive, creative, incredible, we actually would be if we truly let go and embraced all of these rich, beautiful qualities to be in abundance within us. So we play it small. So what we do here now that you've got this quality, it's that quality that now you're going to look at ways to implement this more in your life in gentle little steps. So for this friend of mine, She's going to have a little bit more strength, a little bit more power, and a little bit more love. Now, they are the three that she's working on. And I have to tell you, her face just lit up at this exercise. It's so positive and it's instant. Hello, I'm James Hollis, uh, speaking on behalf of the Young Society of Washington. Possibly the wisest thing ever said about human nature was uttered 20 centuries ago by uh, an ancient uh, Roman playwright, Terence, who said, nothing human is alien to me. And what he was suggesting is we carry all of human nature. We are the carriers of human nature. So there are elements in us that we would perhaps repudiate, that we would fear, 
uh, that we want to deny or we might project onto someone else. Um, and these constitute what, what Jung called the shadow. Now, the shadow is one of Jung's richest concepts. Um, it's one of his most misunderstood concepts. Too often it's associated with evil, and certainly evil can come from our shadow. Uh, we don't wish to acknowledge that we're avaricious, or we're uh, stingy, or we're jealous of others, or envious, or, or we don't wish to acknowledge animosity towards someone. But it's roiling within our psyche nonetheless, and often spills out in unconscious ways. Can show up in our dreams, can show up in our unconscious behaviors. Uh, and many of our best impulses are part of the human shadow too. Those capacities for generosity, for risk and adventure, for creativity, those too are part of our shadow because we often find ourselves intimidated by what they ask of us. We find ourselves uh, challenged perhaps by uh, standing up to and embodying some of our possibilities. And, and so that too is shadow because we could define shadow as those parts of my, myself or those parts of my organization, such as my nation or my, my groups, um, that when brought to consciousness, I find troubling, I find contradictory to my values, I, I find um, sort of uh, counter to my intentionality, and yet they're there and they show up. And, and there are collective shadows, too. Every institution has its pathology, no matter how noble the intent of the institution. Um, every nation has its uh, darker side. Uh, we, we know about ethnic hatreds, and, and we know about how people often project what is unacceptable in themselves to, onto their neighbor. And, and that's been the source of so much uh, history of violence and, and terror in our world. And so the, the human shadow represents our greatest moral task. And that task begins at home. It begins through our own ac uh, acknowledgement of the fact that I carry within me all that I wish to repudiate in humankind. And I need to be conscious around that because where I'm not conscious, it will likely show up unconsciously in my world as a result of my own behaviors or my own uh, resistance to, to honest efforts. Um, to understand the nature of the shadow is to be called constantly to examine our values. It's not that we are doing wrong deliberately, but wrong often comes out unconsciously. And so I need to become aware of those areas of one's life where uh, there's a certain autonomy and they're, they're acting and, and show up in our relationships and our behaviors and so forth. The healing of the human psyche is always going to come from the side of the shadow. It often shows up as psychopathology. And from a Jungian standpoint, we welcome the psychopathology because it tells us about what's going on in the psyche. It tells us about the compensatory factors that are at work in the psyche. The human ego is not capable of full awareness. It's not capable of healing itself. It has to come to terms with those parts of itself which are operating in forms that are contrary to. Now, if you're interested in this subject and subjects like it, I would invite you to consider taking a class or a lecture at the Jung Society of Washington. Thank you. Now, I've been doing this work for many, many years, and it's now really deeply ingrained in me so much that when I have a reaction to someone, like when I have a strong emotional reaction, well, not just someone or something, it's my automatic reaction to go now, is this a fear or is this an observation? Is there an actual charge there? And if so, what is it that I'm denying within myself? And then I bring it out of the basement and then I look at it in the shadow, I look at it in the positive, I give it great acceptance and love. I have acceptance and now I've just moved myself further into self-empowerment. I've actually just grown in self-love and self-empowerment. It's so cool and I do it almost on a daily basis and nothing has the charge that it used to. Or if it does, 
it's my stuff and I own it. So the beauty of this, the blame game, the victim story, there's just no room for it. It's straight into self-ownership. It's a very cool discipline. It doesn't mean I don't go into victim stories. It doesn't mean I don't have the poor me pity party. But that means that that victim story, that poor me pity party, I don't stay in it for long. I think that's a healthy part of processing whatever it is that we're feeling and to sort out my stuff from somebody else's stuff. And as an empath, I do have to spend time doing that. But once I've recognized it's my stuff, then it's straight into owning it and healing it. Now, another point I want to share is that when you observe a trait in another and it doesn't have a charge to it, it becomes interesting to observe it in another. With kindness and compassion that you can now exercise to another who actually probably isn't really behaving in a way that really normally 